This TVKO presentation, Festival of Champions, is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for a crisp, clean taste. Time now for the main event. It's the one that is the cornerstone of this Festival of Champions. A former three-time world champion, Azuma Nelson, gets set to take on Jesse James Leha, the former WBC world champion, for the fourth time. And here's the tale of the tape. Nelson, at the age of 39, says he still has plenty left and he is ready to fight. Jesse James Leha once fought for $500,000. Now the paydays have dwindled to one hundredth of that. He wants to show the boxing world that he still has world championship stuff to come. Well, we've still got this fight to look forward to here in San Antonio, Texas. Jesse James Leha against Azuma Nelson. So far tonight, we've seen three take TKOs in the middle rounds. As for this one, well, it's gone even across the board for both three. And that's one of the beautiful things about this rivalry that has gone back over the years, Azuma Nelson and Jesse James Leha. To help set you up for our main event tonight in this Festival of Champions, listen to some of the background information. It's a true boxing rarity. Two established one-time champions meeting for a fourth time, hoping that for all the familiarity, they can somehow pull out one last surprise on the other. It's been a special rivalry because of the symmetry. One win, one loss, one draw for each. This time, for the first time, they'll fight at 135. Leha says last time getting down to 130 almost killed him. It definitely allowed a boxing professor, Azuma Nelson, to jump all over him. It was over before we stepped into the ring, but uh, he put, he made it over. He, I mean, he came in and he fought a great fight. He came tough at me, and uh, he took advantage of the situation that was at hand, where I didn't have anything, I didn't have anything to do. So you know, he took care of it himself. This is home to Jesse James, a place for family, and because of his success, celebrity too. Sometimes, though, it's tougher to perform in front of people who care. At 39, Azuma Nelson, a spiritual man of God, has come here to San Antonio before and heard the booze. I said, see, whatever you do, whatever you do, you pay for it, you know? And it's like, if uh, American, American, somebody from America did something bad, you know, it goes to uh, the president, you know? So <laughs> when they boo me, <laughs> he's going to just a James Leha, you know? I fought him, and I know I can beat him. I've gone 30 rounds with Azuma Nelson, so I know I can do well with that. And, and that's, that's what really calms me down and say, hey, you fought the, at your best against Azuma Nelson, you could do it again. When I'm in good condition like this, you know, uh, like I said, it's very dangerous, you know. So uh, if it's in good condition like I am, then the fight is going to be very, very tough. You know, uh, I, I know I'm going to win, no matter what, whether it's 12 rounds or first round or second round. Back with John Saraceno and John, if we do something bad, it goes right to the president. <laughs> I'm wondering about that. <laughs> Give us a, your overview. Let's start with the hometown guy. Well, crossroads fight for Leha, no doubt about it. His battle cry has to be, remember the Alamo Dome. When he fought here the first time against Nelson, Nelson was awarded the victory initially and ended up being a draw. A lot of people thought Leha won the fight, including himself. That was in front of 63,000, and you always think the hometown guy is going to get the decision. Well, it didn't happen that time. And neither did Pernell Whitaker, because that was the main event that night. Now, in Azuma Nelson, we're talking about you know, one of the greatest fighters that a lot of people don't know. He fights out of Ghana. He's gone through tremendous hardships growing up, not wondering where his meals and food would come from. He's overcome all of that, and he's made a fabulous career for himself now as he continues to fight at the age of 39. He's been a terrific fighter, and not just a great warrior, but a good man in and out of the ring. A lot of people don't know that about Azuma Nelson. You know, his mom wanted him to become a doctor and lawyer. Instead, he became one of the best featherweights and junior lightweights of his era, Al, and he's a surefire Hall of Fame lock. All right, that's what lies ahead. It's our main event tonight in the Festival of Champions. Let's get more from Barry Tompkins, Mills Lane, and Rich Murata. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Well, Azuma Nelson may not have become a doctor, but he is something of a surgeon in the ring. Complete professional. And he's a guy, Rich, and seems to defy everything for the simple fact that he fights once a year. You're not supposed to be able to come back and fight off a layoff very well. He does it. He does it time and again. He's been off 15 months this time. Is he going to be able to do it again? Well, you, you can never be sure, but you can't doubt Azuma Nelson either because the record is there. He's proven it time and again. And the thing about Azuma Nelson is the fact that he calls himself the professor and it's very true. When he fights a guy 
again and again, and in this case for a fourth time. The problem for his opponent is, is Azuma always gets better. You go down through the years, tough fight against Jeff Fennick first time, he blew him out the second time they fought. Tough fight against Mario Azabachi Martinez first time they fought, blew him out the second time that they uh, fought. Down through the years, Azuma has been the master of the rematch. It took him until the third time he fought Jesse Leha to really blow Leha out of there, which he did in six rounds. And now we'll see if that rematch mastery uh, observed here again tonight by the professor. All right, let's talk a little bit about Jesse James Leha. Certainly he's got the home crowd going for him. That's a given. The fans here will really be in support of Leha. He had his best fight ever against Azuma Nelson in the second fight. That, too, was here at the Alamo Dome. Well, he, he does have the home crowd, but the one thing that I think he might not have, he might not have complete discipline. The guy's got great tools, but here's a kid to let his weight drift up into the high 40s and low 50s. He had to bring that weight off. Even at, just before weigh-in time, he looked dry to me. He's dried out. And they pump these kids full of water and a lot of food in 24 hours and say, we got him back. That's not so. That's not so. The best advice I ever got when I was fighting, get in shape and fight what you weigh. What I want to know with Leha is in the late rounds or the mid rounds, does he begin to fade because he had to make weight? That's the question. All right, and of course, the hoopla of the fighters coming into the ring is always a big thing. I don't think anything's going to be any bigger than what we're about to see here. Azuma Nelson and Jesse James Leha are both going to try to work this room, get the crowd going. And that certainly is what Azuma Nelson is going to do. Let's sit back, listen, and watch the three time champion. introduced and probably get booed here but believe me a guy who's been this great a fighter maybe the greatest african fighter ever uh, with uh, apologies perhaps to dick tiger the, the this guy deserves all the respect that any fighter could ever get sure hall of famer azuma nelson and now
are both so polite, so respectful, and just good citizens, and yet they're going to get in there and try to knock each other's block off. Yeah, they're going to get it on. He might need one of those guns when this damn thing goes down. Well, it's almost that the fight is going to be anticlimactic here. One of the few times in the history of sports that uh, a trilogy is done in four parts. And yet, this is part number four. Go to the center of the ring right now, the introduction of the fighters with Michael Buffer. Michael? Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, America presents in association with your undisputed. Hold on, please. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, America presents, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Bring you 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant. IBA Junior Lightweight World Championship, sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Executive Director, Rochelle A. Martin. Deputy Executive Director, Jim Hughes. Boxing Coordinator, Dick Cole. Positions at ringside, Dr. A.T. Carrasco. Dr. Ruben Tenorio. Timekeeper at the bell, Bill Gavin. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Patrick McMahon. This belt is also sanctioned by the IBA, President Dean Chance, IBA Supervisor at ringside, Norm Longton. The scoring for this contest is done on a 10-point must system, and your three judges assigned at ringside are Gary Merritt, Gail Van Oy, and Harold Letterman. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Lawrence Cole. Your fighters' records are courtesy of The Ring, the Bible of Boxing. And now, the main event of the evening. Are you ready? Orale, damas y caballeros, están listos. From the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with black, and weighing 132 pounds. His professional record, 39 victories. 28 by knockout with only four defeats and two draws. He comes to us from Accra, Ghana, Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the future Hall of Famer and former four-time world champion, the professor, Azuma Nelson. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver. His weight, 134 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 36 victories, 15 by knockout with only three losses and two draws. Ladies and gentlemen, from San Antonio, Texas, presenting the three-time NABF champion and former WBC super featherweight champion of the world. Jesse James Leha. Hey, that's wrong. This is it. This is it. Let's go, James. Come on, James. Come on, James. Let's go. Let's go, James. Get the robo. All right, gentlemen, you know how this goes. I want you to obey my commands. Thanks so for all time. Understand? Good luck. He's been nicknamed the Terrible Terror, the Tiger, and the Professor. All of those nicknames have been applicable. The one nickname that he doesn't want is washed up. Azuma Nelson is going to show everybody, or try to show everybody, that he is still the force that he's always been. No secrets amongst these two. Three previous meetings, 30 previous rounds, 
Each man has won one, and one was a draw. Nelson, when he spoke with us, felt the early part of the fight very important. Wants to get the crowd out of it as much as possible. Put it on his man early, he said. Well, Nelson said, he's a good fighter, very slick, but he's no professor, and I'm going to take him out. Important, I think, for Jesse James Leha to show some lateral movement, move side to side, because that, if any fighter is given Azuma Nelson trouble, it's been that type of fighter. Yes, movement beats uh, Nelson. That's the way it's been in his career. Leha used it to beat him. Gennaro Hernandez used it to beat him last year. And, of course, early on, Pernell Whitaker used the movement to beat him. But if you stand and trade, if you stand in front of Azuma Nelson and make defensive mistakes, he will make you pay. And, of course, in the last fight, it really was over before it was over. A huge right hand by Azuma Nelson. I know, Rich, you felt one of the best punches you've ever seen. That's right. It was a beautiful shot. And Leha made a defensive mistake. You started a right uppercut, and he stuck his, hand, his head, basically his chin, right up in the air. And Nelson came right over the top and blasted him with it. I was shocked that Leha ever got up. Said, I will not make that same mistake tonight. These two guys, very amicable, very friendly with each other. Great respect for the other man. But right now, it's all business. will have to be a little quicker with his feet than he was in that fight against Gennaro Hernandez where last year where he was basically kind of a plodding fighter and he just let Hernandez utilize all of the ring and he used a lot of movement. So he's got to improve the his quickness of his feet here tonight and shuffle forward a little faster than normal. Because Leha's going to fight a tactical fight against him. Because Hernandez really the master boxer. Very savvy guy. Tough guy to fight, I think, for anybody. Well, of course, Nelson won't be going up against the same kind of height and reach disparity that he faced in that one. Double left hand from Leha. That gets a reaction from the crowd, but neither one was huge. And Benishak was a one downstairs by Nelson. And James is being a little bolder than I thought he would be in this first round. Especially with the memory of that first round in their last fight got to point out that the crowd is going to react to Leha and his punches much quicker and much louder than they will to those of Nelson. Right now, let's go to Sean O'Grady. Sean? Well, I'm over here with, with Jesse James Leha's family, his wife, Lisa. And Lisa, how do you control your nerves? It's very hard to do that, but uh, we just stay calm and we have a, we say a prayer before we come out and, uh, you know, whatever happens from there, we can't control. How important is a win tonight to the family of Jesse James Leha? It's not, it's, the win is not important to us. It's just uh, for both fighters to actually come out and uh, do their best. And I think they've been both looking, for, looking forward to this for a long time. Well, James had a good first round. How, how did you assess that first round? Um, I, I give that round to James. Yeah, James. James the second is over here. Connie is over here. Connie uh, James, the uh, mother of Jesse James Leha. Everybody's here to support James Leha. Well, and I think the better part of the city of San Antonio is here to support Jesse James Leha. He did have a pretty effective first round, I thought, Mills. Yeah, I did. I gave it to him tonight. Take a look at the punches in round number one. Very comparable. Uh, Nelson, uh, a little bit busier according to our numbers. I give it to uh, Leha tonight. Nelson's a guy oftentimes will work his way into a fight. It's more effective as the fight goes on.
fought largely in the center of the ring. Neither man has really done a lot of damage. Something to look for here tonight, Barry, would be Azuma Nelson's overhand right. It comes from over the top. He will lure you in, and he just tried to throw it right there. He will lure you in and try to throw that overhand right. It comes from up high and try to bring it over the top, and that's where he scores a lot of big punches. You know, the thing about Azuma Nelson, talk about the fact he's been off for 15 months. He's fought for the last three years only once a year. And he seems to be able to come back and pick up where he left off. The one question that you have to have is a fighter like Azuma Nelson, I'm not suggesting that this is true of Nelson, but a fighter like him could get old in one day. Absolutely old in the call on getting old in one night. You come out there and suddenly just an old man. And he is, in fact, uh, if for that weight division, he's up there. But he's moving quite well, and he's on his toes. Yeah, he's looking, he's given a few Jersey Joe Walker tricks in there. Look at that movement by Zuma. He showed none of this to Gennaro Hernandez. That's what I talk about. I think they want him to utilize his feet here a little bit tonight in this fight with Leha. Very nice. Giving Leha a lot of different angles, too. A lot of different looks. And Azuma now is trying to lure Leha on one mistake. There's the right hand we talked about, where he tried to lure you in and then counter with the right. What he does is he likes to block a punch with his left shoulder and then shoot the right. The guy is really the consummate professional. Coming to the end of round number two. Neither man with an inch. Barry, I thought Azuma Nelson fought much better that round and confused Jesse James Leha a little bit in that round. With that left hand. I thought he gave a lot busy. of different angles. You're looking good on your legs, but you've got to start touching him a little bit more with that left hand. You know, he's looking to throw that right hand, okay? And he's looking to protect himself from your right hand. You've got to go into that rib a little bit more, I think, with that right hand, okay? You've got to use your, I think, you want to sucker him into that left hook. Sucker him in to bring that right hand. I like the left hook over that right hand, okay? Well, that could slip. Get that hand up if you do it, though, okay? You've got to touch him a little bit more. You're moving good, but be a little closer to him. A little bit closer to him. Sucker him in. Mm-hmm. He's protected with that right hand real good, though. And you got to bring his hands down a little bit with some body work. Okay? He remembers that right hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he ain't forgetting it. you got to bring those hands down a little bit. Now, what's your opinion of how much Azuma Nelson listened to that? I don't think he listened at all. I think he knows what he wants to do. Now, you have to remember that Azuma Nelson is a guy who turned pro back in 1979. And he fought for the WBC featherweight title in 82 and only his 14th fight against the great Salvador Sanchez was a late substitute and fought way better than anyone ever expected him to and a couple of years later he was world champ take a look at the numbers thus far through the first two rounds and uh, neither man scoring with much effectiveness and yeah, nobody I like Leha again 10-9 he's busy not no, not really 10-9 for Leha he's busy that round uh, I think you'd agree, Rich, a tough round to score with. I gave it to Nelson. Yeah, I was just going to say I disagreed with the judge on that one. I hope he won't slap <laughs> slap me down. <laughs> not, a bit, not a chance. And I think Nelson is trying to lure Leha into mistakes. He, it, he really seems to be looking for that right hand, doesn't he? Yes, and he wants Leha to extend himself, maybe to lunge with a punch, and he's going to try to bring that right hand right over it. Leha determined not to make that mistake. That's where Leha wants to fight. Good move by Nelson there. Bobby Breedham. There's a couple of real nice body punches by Leha in there. Everything to the head missed, but a couple of nice body shots. Come on, let go. Right? Go back. Zuma's an amazing guy, living in Accra, Ghana, lives in a plantation, supports his immediate family, which includes six children, and then an extended family, which includes about at least 15 others who live right there on the plantation or right in the surrounding area. He means so much to the people of Ghana. Most popular athlete uh, ever uh, to come out of Ghana. He was talking about a soccer player who was very popular, but it pales uh, in worldwide attention to uh, Azuma. But we asked him whether or not he was able to walk 
down the streets and not be bothered? He said, yeah, absolutely, people know me, but I'm not bothered. He says, actually, it's worse sometimes in New York or somewhere there where you have a lot of fight fans, and they follow him down the street. There's that quick right hand, and he brings that right hand in a hurry. But you have two fighters fighting a tactical fight right now. And, and I think that's to be expected when they've seen each other three times already. Coming down toward the end of three, neither man completely taking charge in this fight yet. Barry, these are very tough rounds to score. Yes, they are. Oh, you read that too. Okay, all right, I got it. Okay, I, I go inside the next round. Okay, no. Okay, talk to him, Jesse. Keep him busy, you gotta keep him busy. You gotta keep him busy. To load up on that ride. You know, You're looking to load up on that ride. Oh, that's right. He's trying to load up. Watch, he's going to throw it in a minute now. He's going to yeah, throw yeah. it. Yeah. He's now watch watching. He's dropping his left weapon. He knows the jab. Yeah. So look at him. Give me the mango, please. Okay, okay. Mango, look at him. Okay. What do you. Yes, I am. Mango, look at him. Yes, I am. 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 Yes, I am.
Now watch me. See the loose control. Deep breath. You understand? So, once you feel that touch going to your body, you got to make sure both are being blocked with that right hand. Yeah? It's the only thing he touched you with, really. And he hurt him at the end twice. Now. Leha landed more punches that round, but it was Nelson who landed the big shots. Look at that right hand. He dug it in just underneath the elbow. Beautiful punch by Azuma, and he drove Leha back to the ropes. Now, near the end of the round, Nelson landed with some big shots. There's that left hook, and Leha may be just in a little bit of trouble there at the end of the round. I think the question is, was it enough for Nelson to win the round? I scored the, I scored the round even. I thought that, uh, that, that Leha was ahead until the end, and he got nailed, and he, but I thought the round was even. But now we're going to see what he's made out of. This is the round he's going to find out about that way. Go! Round five, the touch gloves. Let's talk about that weight a little bit, Mills. Uh, you were saying that, well, we know for a fact that Azuma Nelson walks around just a couple of pounds over his fighting weight. But Jesse James Leon actually told us he may come in as heavy as 150 pounds. That's 15 pounds. It's, it's like Barry is dangerous. The, the, the fighters that are really pros go to their office every day. The road in the gym, they go to the office and they stay close to the fighting. Like this idea of blowing up and coming down is a, it's dangerous, it's a mistake, and the kids should not do that. And you think guys will wear out at the end of the fight? I think they'll wear out, absolutely. And he's fighting the hell of a fight right now. Right now he is. He's jumping on Azuma Nelson. Well, the weight loss that you referred to left him really with no strength at all in the last fight with Azuma Nelson. And he had to lose nine pounds in the last couple of days before his fight with Gabriel Ruelas when he lost the world championship. And that certainly didn't contribute anything to his cause. Okay, I'm enjoying the fans here. They're really trying to rally Leha. He's a big hero here in San Antonio. Maybe second only to David Robinson. And they've become fast friends, actually, and are partners in charitable affairs. There is the littlest Leha, James II, his seven-year-old son, who held one of the over 100 tickets that Jesse James Leha had to buy for the next fight. But don't you get the idea that Azuma Nelson's laying in the weeds a little bit here? Yeah, but he can't wait too long. to establish the tempo, I think. If he can get it going, then he can start building up some points. In terms of jabbing, moving, quick combinations, moving side to side. Moving Azuma Nelson as he did there. He turned Nelson completely with that little move. Yeah, he's really executing the game plan extremely well, I think. And that was the first sign of a little frustration, I think, from Nelson. of their second fight, which was in Las Vegas, which Leha won convincingly over Nelson. This round, a very good round again for Leha. And a double left hand from Leha. Leha really doing some business here. Excellent round. Good shot. Excellent round for Jesse James Leha. Jesse James Leha put on a real clinic. The student putting on a clinic for the professor in that round. Here was that. Why did you grab up a gun? He's doing beautiful, man. Are you back? Hey, what? Yeah. Is that deep? What you doing? I don't think what you doing, okay? Just be, 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 be. How you feel, Jimmy? Uh, uh, this is great. Great. Just warming up. Got turned around a little in that round. Was unable to deal with the movement of Leha. Nelson, a little bit wild at times, was really trying to catch up to Leha, but he couldn't. He got frustrated, missed the wild right. You don't see that too often from a guy like Azuma Nelson. Back and back. The smart attack. Touch and go. Touch and go. All right. You can't let him do four to one. All right. And just the slightest concern uh, okay. in the voice of Joe Goosen. Smart, smart, smart. Round six.
Nelson in the white trucks, Leha in the black. I thought the best round of the fight, the last round for Jesse James Leha. Good round for him. I gave it to him 10 9. Take a look at the numbers thus far, and uh, Nelson has actually landed more punches and thrown more punches than Leha, but I think Leha has dictated the tempo of the fight. Yeah, I did. I saw that round for Leha, 10-9, but it is a close fight. These rounds are tough to score. But we're going to find out now about whether or not uh, the old professors are going to take care of this kid. They're making weight. is the way to do it. You'd think if he'd learned the lesson the last couple of fights, but I guess not. Well, of course, in this fight, you're talking about a different weight. You're talking about 135, at least. In the past, he had to come down to 130. And they found that his... Just his basic muscle mass is 136, so there's nothing really there for him to lose. Yeah, no percent body fat, he said, at 136. I find that hard to believe, but nonetheless, that's what he told us. He said at 148, he has 9 percent body fat. At 130, he's got no strength, he said. who appear to be playing a waiting game uh, could get himself in a situation, and you alluded to this earlier, Rich, where he waits too long. And now he needs to get his own rhythm going. He's kind of just plotting in this round, looking for something to happen, and looking to be able to counter. There was a double jab in the right hand, but it was still a little bit short. There's a left hook from Leia. Nelson coming over the top has not been there for him so far. And that's been a trademark of his career. And so far, Leha has been able to evade it or block it. Most of the time, blocking it. You know, Leha haven't, haven't given him any place to put it. He's keeping the left hand high. Nelson pulled back and tried to come over the top, but it didn't work last time. quite as quick as I remember from Azuma Nelson either. Let you, know Let you know something I don't know. And I don't think you do right now at this point. I do know this. We're falling behind. See, you've got to pick it up. You understand what I'm saying? I mean more than pick it up. you got to go in there and try to kick his butt. All right? You got to... Azuma... If he does this all night, we're, we're, we're not going to come out on the tall end of the stick. I need you to get in there and start muscling him. you got to make it happen. You're not making it happen. You going to do it? All right, let's let's, let's go. On. I know what you're doing, but I need you to do more. What is this, eight, seven or eight? Yeah, seven. Seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got, hey, Zuma, we got five rounds, baby. you got to hurt this guy. You can't, you can't follow him around the ring like that. I'll tell you what, I think those are two terrific comments made by Joe Goose. Show me what you can do. Come on, it's not Come on. I see uh, holding and pulling any strings at all here. Go on, let it hang out. Let it hang out. They're outstanding comments. He's telling the truth, what he's got to hear. No question about it. And Nelson does come right out and try to jump on Leha. Here are the head and body punches, the difference. As you can see, uh, just a lot more punches landed. And now, uh, on Mills, on Mills on your card, uh, a rather decided edge. Yes, I gave way on that round 10 now. And Joe Goosen in the corner, you can see, with each succeeding round, his level of concern and intensity in his talking to Azuma Nelson gets a little bit more, a little higher. But he still respects Nelson's experience. And he, but still, it's plain talking to Azuma. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That was terrific. And Nelson is trying to pick it up here in terms of the pace. He is going after Leha in this round. But his punches are coming slow. You're absolutely right, Barry. They're coming slow. And it is Leha who gets back at Nelson. He's being out-hustled. Being out-hustled and out-muscled. 
right thrown from a strange angle by Leha and Nelson simply wasn't ready for it. He really uncorked it with great speed. It's a great punch by Leha, keep in mind he knows what happens because he's felt the power in the pillows of Azuma Nelson in the past fight. So we come to round number eight. The rounds get shorter. through seven rounds. Leha still with a higher connect percentage, although Nelson has landed more punches. I like Nelson at round 10-9. The last story was enough to steal it by Leha. Nelson's coming on now a bit. You know, I think that Joe Goosen really did light a fire under Azuma Nelson in that last round. Nelson took to heart what he was saying. And if he wasn't listening to Goosen earlier, he did last round. And a left hand by Leha. But again, a war favors Nelson. Good shot by Leigh. Excellent. Three straight punches right on the bar. quality fighter. He has not lost a fight since he lost that last bout to Azuma Nelson. 6-0 since then. And remember that his three losses and his 41 bouts and his draw have all been in world championship fights. You're not a journeyman and beat Jesse James Lamb. Right now, let's go to Sean O'Grady for comments. Sean? Yeah, they're very upset over here in the corner of Azuma Nelson. They want Nelson to control that movement of Leha. When Leha gets Nelson chasing him without throwing bunches, they do not like that. Leha just took a step back, took a deep breath. A couple of uppercuts got in there. And there's a left hand by Nelson. It's a good shot. Nelson's having much more success in closer range. Yeah, but he's coming faster. He's, he's quicker with his feet tonight, there's no doubt. Nobody's getting out of 
wrestle right now. But he's got that power. That left hook of his is a brutal shot. Double left hand, and that gets Leha moving in a backward direction also. Leha missed with that left. Azuma was controlling the action with his power. And then Leha. That was not the punch that got him. Let's see if we've got it. He's in a little trouble here. I think we've already... But he closed it with a big flurry. And Nelson was in trouble at the end of the round. But he had walked right into a big right hand that originally got him into trouble. You all right? Of course you are. Go. Let's go. A little slow getting off that stool, Azuma was. It looked like he had to really strain to get off of it. And Joe Grusin now turning into a cheerleader. It's the ninth round. Taylor to the numbers through eight rounds. And again, a high connect percentage for Leia is starting to narrow as Leonard as well. Now Sid has thrown more punches. I scored that round for Leon 10-9. Stole him in. That one punch is one you might want to look back on should this fight go the distance. Because that turned that round. this point. He's, he seems very strong. You're right, but the tragedy is he could be so much better if he were just in the business. A lot of concern in the corner of Azuma Nelson. They, uh, they are very concerned about their man just not doing enough to take this fight. And that he's running out of time. They don't want him waiting. And that's what they figure he's doing right now. Here's a right hand from Leia right the button. And a little nod of assent from Azuma. Combination there. Yeah, I think he hurt Azuma Nelson a little bit then. He did hurt him a little bit. Nelson's hands are dropping. Yeah, Nelson having trouble getting away from punches now. He's going to need all of his wizardry and all of his guile. Everything that he's had in 19 years as a professional. And the question, of course, is can he muster the strength? Leha smiled after that right. That one he saw coming. Almost 
Keep trying. You can't give up. Because you can do it. Azuma, you can do it. You can do it. But I'm going to tell you something. Look at me. You have to force yourself. You have to force yourself from the inside of Zuma to keep your head moving and to keep the pressure on. You have to force yourself. You're standing up too tall now. You're letting him get the angle over on this side. Look at me. You're letting him get the angle. Jesse James Leha landed maybe the single crispest punch of the night in that last round. Look at that right hand. A beautiful, sharp right. Totally crisp. Straight right hand. Textbook style. Not only that, I tell you, when he got hit with that right hand, he felt a little twinge in the opposite side of his body in the foot. That's what you feel. Believe me, I've been there. That hurts. Get him with the right hand and feel it in your foot, huh? Right on the other side. Yeah. All he's got is that overhand right and a left hook. That's all you got to look for. All your own power. Come on. Go, go. Great concern in the corner of Azuma Nelson with good reason. Round 10. There's that right hand, but you see how much he loops it. Here are the numbers and the body shots and the head shots. Rather comparable. Nelson uh, doing more work to the body, but I think Leha has done effective work to the body. 10-9 that round for Leha. That makes it a four-point difference on your card, and that would mean uh, that unless there's a knockdown, that uh, Azuma Nelson cannot win this fight on the judges' scorecards. Unless he gets a couple 10-8 wins, but that doesn't mean right. unless there's a knockdown. If Leha just continues to fight his same fight, he's going to win here this evening. He's fought a very well-contained fight here tonight. A patient fight, a very smart and intelligent bout against Nelson. He's taken what Nelson has to offer, and he's taken some hard punches. But the only thing that I think can really get to lay on now and hurt him is if he gets reckless and gets careless. And, and I just don't see that happening. shot from Leha. a jab, but that's not going to be enough. No, but I think what he's doing here is trying to find a rhythm. Bouncing on his toes a little bit, Barry. Trying to throw the jab out there. Just trying to go back to boxing basics if he can here. Back to the ABCs and see if he can't get something going for him. That's a good job by Leon. Got in, got out. Didn't get himself in any traps. dictating this fight. Well, this, this is, you're just seeing a replay of their second fight. This is exactly how Jesse James Leon beat Azuma Nelson in their second bout. Which he readily admits was his best fight ever. I think tactically, fighting every bit as well in this fight. Another effective round for Jesse James Leon. Let's go over to the champ, Sean O'Grady. Sean, what do you got? Well, no bad news over here in the Jesse James Leha corner. Everybody's happy. I was talking to Leo Zunica in his corner. They love what he's doing now. He's scoring. He's backstepping. He's allowing for Nelson to run into everything. And he has got Nelson ready to go. In fact, a couple of times in that last round, Nelson was wobbled. And I think they're going to very soon try to go in and end this fight. All right, Sean, thanks very much. And in the corner uh, of uh, Jesse James Leha, Sean suggesting, saying be careful, don't get in any trouble. In the corner of Azuma Nelson, they are basically saying you have got to get him up. Nelson running out of time. Leha doing 
everything right. Numbers continue to favor Nelson in terms of punches landed in favor of uh, Leha in terms of connect percentage, but the bottom line is that Leha has dictated the fight almost from the beginning. Yeah, I like Leha that round 10-9. He's, he's opening up a lead. He's going to have to get stopped and knocked down a couple of times in order to get this thing on. And he's in trouble. And if I was Leha, in trouble. If I was Leha, I wouldn't change a thing. Keep fighting the exact same fight. Don't look for the knockout. He's got everything under control. Nelson still has some power. He's still dangerous. So that's why you don't want to go nuts out there looking for a KO. No reason to. Never forget Billy Kahn against Joe Lippitz. Well, that's right. <laughs> went way ahead after 13 rounds, 12 rounds. He got reckless and went for the KO. Billy Kahn did and found himself knocked out. Nelson's punches almost too easily. The blood's coming down the right side of his face. Yeah, it's up above the, it's on the bra. Oh. Yeah, that it is, you're right. Interestingly enough, in Nelson's last fight against Gennaro Hernandez, he was well behind on points and landed an illegal blow to Gennaro after the belt and knocked Gennaro down and had him in big trouble. And Hernandez continued. And now in this fight, it's a headbutt. Good right hand from Leha. And another right hand. And this is a trouble. The professor looks like he's run out of tricks. Who's out? Gonna take a look at this headbutt, and uh, it's all right. It was pretty nasty. All right, in that last round, there you see the clash of heads right there. It was Nelson coming in, but Leha answered back, maybe out of anger. Well, you clearly, I don't think it was intentional. Everybody getting wild, going wild here, including the family of Jesse James Leia, as they watched that last round with a little more concern, of course, due to the blood after the uh, headbutt. But nonetheless, uh, they have to feel pretty good about what they're seeing out there tonight. Keeping it together pretty well. That's got to be a very difficult thing. you got to let it hang out. Three This is it, 12 to 5. It's very possible, Barry, that we may be looking at one of the great, the last rounds, or the last round of one of the great fighters ever. Yeah, I had 10-9 uh, for Leha. He's done a quite a good fight, smart fight. And right from the beginning, too. I think Leha just went out, executed what the plan that he went in with, and really never let Nelson in this fight. Well, it looks like if they took him to school last time, if they, they graduated and uh, the old professor said, well, the young pupil showed me a few tricks. Nelson knows that in all likelihood he's well behind, and he's going out to try to pull it out with one last miracle. The right hand did get there. Right hard, get back with the right hand of his own. Good exchange out there. James Leon tonight has proven he 
can go 12 straight. He got nailed for the left hand from Nelson. Lazuma's letting it all hang out here. Referee's done a good job. Dickie, Lawrence Cole's done a good job. Tom Anderson from Lehigh. And again, it is Lehigh dishing it out. Perhaps one minute remaining in a legendary career of a sure Hall of Famer, Azuma Nelson. Yeah, it just seems to be a, a tick late, a step slow. And the crowd takes up the chant. I thought you could see one thing really, Barry, when that right hand, which has been so reliable for him in the past, was having trouble getting home. Not as sharp as the old days, not as quick as the old days. Still coming forward, though, still a warrior, still trying to win this fight. And blood getting in the eye of Leo. This fight will not end a minute too soon, so far as he's concerned. And I think Nelson has won this last round. Left hand from Nelson, a big right hand from Leo. of a native son. I thought Jesse James Leha, maybe more importantly than anything else, went out there with an idea and executed his, executed his idea to perfection. Yeah, it was a game plan. I thought the strategy was obvious. It's a strategy that needed to be fought against the Zuma Nelson, the strategy he used before victoriously, and uh, he uh, really fought very well tonight. And really I think good. anyone will be shocked if the decision does not go in Jesse James Leha's favor. Let's go to Al Trotwick. Al? All right, Barry, the great athletes have heart, they have smarts, and they have skill. They also have experience, which at times becomes age, and that begins to erode the skills. Every once in a while, you see a great player who steps to the plate in baseball, for example, and misses the fastball by just this much. And as you saw, Jesse James Leha had fabulous defense for his big right hand, the big right hand of Azuma Nelson. And as John Saracino will look back with me as to what happened in this fight, I, I thought there was a lot to admire from both guys. Both guys were smart, just Leha had more. Very good tactical fight with Jesse James Leha. He did the right thing in the fight. He gave angles at times. Then he punched when he had to. Azuma Nelson, round four. You see the action in the center ring, and Azuma Nelson trying to come on in the fight. A slow start, he was trying to counterpunch and land that big right hand against Leha. After the fourth round in the corner, they told Jesse James Leha, that's the round he wanted you, and he didn't get you. So now we jump to the seventh round. There's a case of age taking its toll on Azuma Nelson. Just can't get it out of the way. The reflexes are not what they were going on 40 years old. Joe Goosen in the corner. Azuma Nelson said, you've got to pick it up. And now we go to the eighth round. And for a while, Azuma Nelson was picking it with a combination punch and backing Leha into the ropes. You know, Leha continued to press the advantage. He knew he was a stronger, younger fighter tonight. And that late flurry saved the eighth round for Jesse James Leha. Twelfth round. This is all heart. Let's go now to Michael Buffer in the ring. Scene to 112 for the winner by unanimous decision. And he is now the IBA lightweight champion of the world. Jesse James Leha! A huge roar from the highly partisan crowd that came to cheer one of their own, Jesse James Leha. And an
important night for him and maybe a turning point in the career of the man he has fought four times, Azuma Nelson. And if you want to consider this the last chapter in their four-step rivalry, well, then it goes to Jesse James Leha. Two wins, one defeat, and one draw. Well, that's a big night. That's the one that San Antonio came out to see, and they go home happy here, John Saracino. Overall, I thought that it was a, it was a good night. No big surprises, but good, solid efforts. And uh, I think we're going to go down to Sean O'Grady right now. We're going to do that in a moment. Overall feelings on the night. Well, Jesse James Leha, the hometown favorite, certainly put the punctuation point on the night's festivities. I think the fights basically went as we thought they would. Miguel Angel Gonzalez looked very good. He's going to go on and continue to fight. Gabriel Ruelas, he, he again stepped ahead, and now we'll have a chance to fight for a title down the road. And again, this was a night where former champions wanted to come into the Alamo Dome and make a statement and show the boxing world that they still can have something to say in the bouts that lie ahead in their future. Now, Sean O'Grady is downstairs. Sean? Champion again, you, you look terrific tonight. How did you win this fight? Uh, by my conditioning. I had some great conditioning for this fight. I needed every single round. Yeah. Uh, I was in great condition to throw 12 rounds. I owe it to my running partner, Mike Burnell, and the guys that run at uh, Roger Solar Sports who helped me out. And I, you know, I owe it to my family for standing behind me and to the best boxing fans in the world, San Antonio. James, they certainly helped you tonight. But it looked as though early in this fight, you tried to get into a brawling match with him. In the middle rounds, you finally started moving a little bit more. Do you think that helped you tonight or hurt you? Well, it might have hurt a little bit, but it also hurt him because I need to take something away from him. I needed him to work early in the fight, and that was the only way I was going to get him working early is by roughing him up a little bit and just really brawling with him. And then I decided that I had to start boxing because he kept unloading those big bombs, Yeah. and he was using his experience. Yeah, late in this fight, he tried to come back and win by a knockout. Yeah. Did he ever hurt you with anything? He hurt me. Uh, I, I forgot which round it was, maybe the sixth, fifth round. He hurt me in this corner over here, and he staggered me. But I also know that I staggered him twice. I saw him buckle up a couple of times. Yeah. Does, where, where does this fight put you now? I, mean, I know you're champion of the world in the, IB, uh, IBA. In the IBA, but where, where, where do you go from here? I, I have no idea. You know, we just sit back, and hopefully I get to defend it a couple of times. You know, get used to the belt and then go up against some good fighters up there. Um, I don't care. I just want to, right now, this thing's over with. I want to go home, be with my family once yeah. again, have a vacation, relax, and then come back to boxing. Well, we talked to your family. They're a terrific family. We talked to them a little bit earlier tonight, and I know you can't wait to get to them. Great family, man. I'm very proud of you, Jesse James. Thank you very much. Okay, buddy. Congratulations, a champion again. I'll see, I'll see you soon. Let me, I want to talk to Azuma also to see how he feels. Azuma, you, you, you little hand trouble there? I see the swelling. Are you okay? Uh, I'm okay, but uh, I have a problem from the fifth round, and uh, I can't hit, but I have to, I have to keep going. Yeah. You know, I know, so. Well, you hung in there for the distance, and even trying to pull off a knockout in the final round. Yeah, because there's nothing you can do. Man. Yeah. I mean, you have to hit, but you can't hit so hard. You know, you feel, feel the pain, and there's nothing you can do. You know, some people have, have talked about, and you've heard the rumors yourself, the better days of Azuma Nelson behind him. Is, is, is this the end of the line for Azuma Nelson or no? Well, I, um, I don't know. I'm going back and see. It looked like you're still ready to fight. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't hit. The, I couldn't punch. Yeah, you, you know, no I couldn't gun. punch. So, yeah. hey, uh, there's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you're going to try to regroup group and figure out what you want to do with your future, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's you right. don't know? Not uh, retiring, but you don't know yet. No, I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. Well, Azuma Nelson's still loosening up here, even though the fight's over. He went the distance with Jesse James Leha, and Leha got the decision. Al, this is a tough man out here. Azuma Nelson. Well, they were both tough, Sean. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But uh, according to Azuma Nelson, he didn't have enough strength in that right hand of his to throw what was the most important punch of his arsenal in that bout. Now, if, in fact, there was some injury to his hand, I mean, that does change things, and it's an emotional time for any fighter, any athlete, after the, the what could be the final game in a career to make a decision like that. He's going to have to think things over and evaluate whether he could have done something different had his hand been okay. Well, you know what? Fighters never make excuses. They always have explanations. <laughs> and I don't think he was making an excuse. He probably does have a hurt right hand. 
But you know what? At age 40, what I saw tonight, even though Zuma Nelson has slowed down with his reflexes, he could continue for as long as he wants, really. All right, so a unanimous decision for Jesse James Leha. Goyo Vargas defeats Tracy Harris Patterson, TKO in the sixth. Miguel Angel Gonzalez beats Alexis Perez in the fifth. And Gabriel Ruelas with a TKO in the sixth over Troy Dorsey. For all of us here in San Antonio with John Saracino, I'm Al Troutwick with Barry and Rich and Mills Lane and Sean O'Grady. Good night. Champions has been brought.